Are peanuts safe to consume if you have IBS? Should you be worried about aflatoxin? Should you be worried about lectins in peanuts? Hi, my name is Andrea Hardy. I'm a registered dietitian and Canada's gut health expert. I specialize in gastrointestinal diseases as well as gut health. I've been getting a lot of questions about the safety of peanuts, specifically in regards to irritable bowel syndrome. So I wanted to address with you the three factors that I consider when I'm encouraging or discouraging patients to consume peanuts. So the first one in regards to IBS is in regards to FODMAPs. So FODMAPs are fermentable carbohydrates. I have a ton of videos on these, so I'm not gonna go into details. However, when it comes to peanuts, peanuts are consumed or considered relatively low in FODMAPs unless you get into large portions. So about two tablespoons of peanut butter or about a quarter of a cup of nuts, about 32 peanuts is considered low FODMAP. When you get into higher doses, it can become high in fructans and galactooligosaccharides, um, which can cause uh, those FODMAPs to ferment and maybe cause gastrointestinal discomfort. However, for the most part, if you're watching your total consumption of peanuts or nut butter in a sitting, uh, then you're doing a good job from a FODMAP perspective. Now, a lot of the information that has come out recently is in regards to aflatoxins. Um, so unfortunately, there is a ton of misinformation on this. Aflatoxins is a way to categorize a type of mold that is harmful uh, to the body when consumed and can build up and cause liver damage as well as liver cancer. However, aflatoxins in North America, Europe, and developed countries are highly regulated to be not included in our food systems. In fact, Canada regulates their aflatoxins so strictly and tests regularly to ensure that none of the products that exist in Canadian markets contain this harmful substance. Now, the challenge with aflatoxins is uh, a lot of people in developed countries get exposed to these things due to farming practices, food storage practices, cooking practices, and um, of course, you know, lack of access to food. Um, there is a lot of plant-based protein consumption in places like Africa, and the food might be stored in a way which uh, encourages the growth of these molds. And so there's a high rate of uh, liver cancer and liver damage associated with consumption of these foods in developed countries because there isn't regulations to support um, making sure that food systems do not have these things. However, in North America, um, we are very privileged because we do have regulations around aflatoxin exposure. So Canada limits the amount of aflatoxin to 20 parts per billion in um, nuts, peanuts, corn, um, food products that may contain aflatoxin. And so you might be like, uh, why do they allow any? That's reckless. And so the fact of the matter is, is food systems aren't perfect. However, this amount is generally recognized as safe. Um, and it's very, very small. So it allows very minute amounts to account for the fact that, you know, our, our food system isn't perfect, but we do a very good job. Now on that note, back in 2013-14, um, the CFIA took samples from around a thousand products that are at risk of containing aflatoxin. About 95% of those did not contain any detectable levels of aflatoxin at all. So that is pretty darn good. Um, the remaining 5%, the majority contained uh, less than that 20 parts per, per billion, only one product contained over. And so when they find products that do um, contain over that 20 parts per billion, they're removed from our food system, they're pulled off of the market because they don't meet our food standards. So if you are avoiding peanuts because you are worried about aflatoxin exposure, guess what? In North America, it's very unlikely that you will be exposed to aflatoxin at all. So you can trust in the fact that our food system is safe. So ultimately, when it comes to these things, my biggest concern is the misinformation out there, the catastrophization, uh, the food fear. When we say things are black and white with food, and nutrition and health, they're just not. So that's a red flag to me. If somebody says a food is going to kill you or going to cause you severe damage or disease, 
to me, that's a sign to raise a red flag and kind of question where they're getting their information from. There's absolutely no research to support that peanuts in any way, shape, or form impact gut health in a negative way. In fact, there is more research to support that legumes, nuts, and seeds are actually beneficial to gut health. So the second concern or the flag or the postulation being raised is with lectins. So lectins are a naturally occurring compound in legumes and pulses um, that are considered anti-nutrients. So they bind carbohydrates and prevent the absorption and lectins cannot be absorbed by the body. Um, now there's been some studies in animal models that look at very high doses of lectin exposure and the impact on overall health. And the research has come up mixed. So in some cases, it appears to be harmful in rats in very high doses. In other cases, they're wondering if there's actual benefit to health. So our fear around lectins are, you know, highly based off of cherry picking research, pulling out one study and being like, hmm, humans are very similar to rats. And, you know, we should be concerned about this because in extremely high doses, it's harmful. Well, you know, anything in high doses is very likely harmful. Uh, so there's some food for thought there, but lectins are safe. Um, in fact, uh, there is some evidence to support that lectins may improve uh, gut health. However, again, the research is small, so we can't necessarily make recommendations around that in a similar way to being unable to make recommendations around the negative side of things. So when it comes to lectins, I'd say the foods that contain lectins have far more research to support their benefits because of other compounds in comparison to worrying about lectins. Specifically, plant-based protein sources like nuts and seeds and pulses, so chickpeas, lentils, beans, um, are supportive of digestive health. They contain prebiotic fibers, which in your colon ferments, and produces benefits like short chain fatty acids, butyrate, propionate, and these things are associated with a reduction of inflammation and an improvement in gut health. So um, when it comes to uh, lectins as well, they're found in uncooked products. Uh, so I don't see anybody eating uncooked black beans. Um, so ultimately when you cook foods, the lectins get broken down and our intake of them is probably fairly neg negligible regardless. So that summarizes uh, why peanuts are safe in IBS and overall health in North America. And I hope that answered your question for you and gave you some confidence in knowing that nutrition isn't black and white and that we can make food decisions uh, not based out of fear, rather out of facts. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please hop over to ignitenutrition.ca, shoot us an email, or follow us on Facebook at Ignite Nutrition Inc. And we will do our best to answer any nutrition questions you may have about gut health. Have a great day.